بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي Dear brothers and sisters, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless uh, this gathering of ours and bless our footsteps to increasing our iman and our knowledge. I ask him to bless our teachers who have shared of their precious time and to bless their families who have sacrificed them for them to be here. And inshallah to make this a blessed convention through which we come back home better and transformed people, Allahumma ameen. And an important step in that direction is this heavy, weighty topic that we have to discuss this afternoon, the topic of justice. And reflecting on the broader theme of the convention, which I'm so thrilled has focused on the prophets, in many ways this is reminding us as Muslims to go back to the basics, to remember those figures and the best of them, the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah has made beacons and shining lights of what it means to be close to Allah, what it means to live a life of principle, a life of ethics, a life of morality, a life that one would be proud to live and proud to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with on the Day of Judgment. And in that stead, we're going to look at several prophets today. The first to open the session is Nabiullahi Musa alayhi salam, or Moses, peace be upon him. And his story is mentioned many places in the Qur'an. Here we will look at a scene from his life with his courageous stance for justice, despite social norms and despite the sacrifices he had to take. If you're following on in your Qur'an app, I'll assume you're not uh, tweeting or surfing the internet. It's uh, Surah Al-Qasas, chapter number 28. The verses start with verse number 15 all the way to 29. We'll start, inshallah, with the recitation of a couple verses. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem Wa dakhala al-madinata ala hini ghaflatin min ahliha fawajada fiha rajulain yaqtatilan فَوَجَدَ فِيهَا رَجُلَيْنِ يَقْتَتِلَانِ هَذَا مِنْ شِيعَتِهِ وَهَذَا مِنْ عَدُوِّهِ فَاسْتَغَاثَهُ الَّذِي مِنْ شِيعَتِهِ عَلَى الَّذِي مِنْ عَدُوِّهِ فَوَكَزَهُ مُوسَى فَوَكَزَهُ مُوسَى فَقَضَى عَلَيْهِ قَالَ هَذَا مِنْ عَمَنِ الشَّيْطَانِ إِنَّهُ عَدُوٌ مُضِلٌ مُبِينٌ قَالَ رَبِّ إِنِّي ظَلَمْتُ نَفْسِي فَاغْفِرْ لِي فَغَفَرَ لَهُ إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ قَالَ رَبِّ بِمَا أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيَّ فَلَنْ أَكُونَ ظَهِيرًا لِلْمُجْرِمِينَ These ayat, Surah Al-Qasas, chapter 28, verses 15 through 17. Open this passage which speaks about a scene from the young adulthood of Prophet Musa alayhi salam before prophethood comes to him. And it is a scene in the Egypt under Pharaoh's rule. And so the ayat start with the meaning and he entered the city while the people were not aware. And the Mufassirun, they comment that it was entering the city during the midday kind of nap period when things would slow down. Remember, this is ancient Egypt, no air conditioning, and so it was common, and this practice continued to the time of the Prophet ﷺ, that 
in the midday after Salatul Dhuhr, people would retire to their homes and rest and it would be quieter. Part of the reason why Prophet Musa had to do this is because he was from Bani Israel, the Israelites who as a nation had been enslaved. And you have to connect with the context to understand the courage of Prophet Musa alayhi salam and what he did. The Pharaoh or Fir'aun, one of the greatest tyrants to ever walk on the face of the planet, was a man who killed babies en masse to save his own skin or so he thought. A person who left the girls to grow into women that they might be aggressed against and violated in the most horrible ways. A person who subjected this entire nation to enslavement, to forced uh, 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 slavery and service without compensation and unimaginable horrors, the likes of which the world had not really seen until that time in many dimensions. And among the subjugation of Bani Israel was that they would not be allowed to enter particular cities and would be restricted in their movements. And sadly, we see a shadow of this today for many of our brothers and sisters in Palestine and in Syria and in Burma and in other parts of the world where justice is not established, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect them and to use us for establishing the causes of justice in every appropriate manner, Allahumma ameen. And so Prophet Musa entered while people were not as aware. And as he entered, he saw a scene, a scene of a man who was from Bani Israel quarreling with a man from the indigenous Egyptians, meaning the people of Pharaoh. And the man from Bani Israel called out to Prophet Musa to help him. Now I want to ask you, before we return to the ayat, what would you do? If a person asked you for help that you knew could probably never pay you back in dunya, doesn't have money, doesn't have status, maybe he's very poor, destitute, what would you do? If a stance for social justice defied the norms and the customs of the society, if you knew that you would take heat for your stance, what would you do? If you knew that the stance might put you in bagged standing with your own family, your own friends, your inner circle, but you knew it was the right thing to do, what would you do? In this split second decision, Prophet Musa, who was, though he was in Bani Israel, a person who was raised in the privilege of the household of the Pharaoh, for a wisdom that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had, a person that while close to Bani Israel and their suffering, had been spared so much by being in this position of distinguishment without selling his values. And in a split, decision, split second decision, that was all about to be on the line. There are people, my brothers and sisters, that will stand for justice as long as it doesn't risk their pocketbook. There are people that will stand for justice as long as it doesn't affect their reputation and standing in the community. There are people that will stand for justice as long as it's the popular stance in society. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran and in the examples of the prophets sought to attach us to a higher ideal, to stand for justice because it is the right thing to do. To stand for the truth because it is the truth. To stand for the disenfranchised and those that have been wronged, whether they are powerful or weak, whether they are rich or poor, 
whether they are your tribe or not, whether they are your people or not. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah An-Nisa, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, kunu qawwamina bil qisti shuhada' lillah, walaw ala anfusikum awil walidayni wal aqrabin. O you who believe, stand forth for justice as witnesses to God, even if it is against your own self or your own parents and the next of kin, your close family. The issue of justice is so important in Islam that you stand for it even if you incriminate yourself. In this moment, Nabiullah Musa alayhi salam put that all on the line and stood for this man. And Prophet Musa was a physically strong, large, tall, powerful man. And so he used his strength to defend this man. But Allah Azza wa Jal willed that it seems that as he struck him, the moment of death happened to this Egyptian man as well. And the Mufassirun, they comment that Prophet Musa السلام, was not necessarily the cause of death, but it was a meeting of the times and there's a long theological discussion. We won't have time to go into it. But now in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's infinite wisdom, in this moment, Prophet Musa السلام, felt that he had erred, felt that he had transgressed. So he said, قَالَ هَذَا مِنْ عَمَلِ الشَّيْطَانِ إِنَّهُ عَدُوٌ مُضِلٌ مُبِينٌ He said, this is from the work of Satan. Indeed, he is, uh, he is one that leads astray and a clear enemy. And I want to say a word especially to the activists in the room. From the diseases that strike many Muslim activists today, is that they find themselves beyond reproach. They find themselves above receiving advice. And this ayah reminds us that if the prophets are humble before Allah, even when they have not committed sin, then you and I are not above the advice of others. Don't look down at anyone who advises you because that is from the path of Satan. Many of us forget this when it comes to sin, that shaitan, he fell from grace with one sin, right? And yet, how many sins have you and I committed since the morning? Haven't we committed, may Allah protect us, more than one sin? And then what's the difference? The difference is the prophets come to Allah with an attitude of humility. And the shaitan... He came to Allah with an attitude of defiance and arrogance. He said, I am better than he. You created me from fire and you created him from clay. Brothers and sisters understand that when a person takes a stand for faith, when a person takes a stand for justice, that they will be tested and things will not always go your way. Allah Azza wa Jal willed in this story that the man that Prophet Musa protected was probably the least deserving man of this stance. This very man called out Musa alayhi salam on the following day, said, do you wish to kill me like you killed the man before? Started to lie about him. Started to feed false information to the authorities of the ver about the very man, Musa alayhi salam, who had saved his life. Because of this man, Musa alayhi salam would be expelled, would leave Egypt under fear of death. But the Quran kept his legacy alive until the day of judgment. And who remembers this Egyptian sellout? Who remembers this man? who did not appreciate that stand for justice. So sometimes when we do the right thing, it comes at a worldly price. It comes that Allah will test us, that we're gonna feel some heat 
in the community, feel some heat, have to sacrifice money. We're not seeking it, but it might come with the territory. But you know, the people that do the wrong thing, their actions catch up with them in this dunya before the hereafter. And Musa alayhi salam, it might look like this Egyptian man has the upper hand now, but Musa alayhi salam has a glorious future and an incredible meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala waiting for him in the hereafter. And this is our hope in Allah that the little good things we do, the meaningful stances that are less than the stances of the prophets, but on the same path, that Allah caused these to be blessings for us and our families and our communities in this life and the day of judgment. And I want to mention just one more scene in this beautiful, beautiful story of Musa alayhi salam that it's in need of review from us. And I'm going to fast forward all the way to verses number 22 and 23 of the same chapter. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ولما توجه تلقاء مدين قال عسى ربي قال عسى ربي أن يهديني سواء السبيل ولما ورد ماء مدين وجد عليه أمة من الناس يسقون ووجد من دونه ممرأتين تذودان قال ما خطبكما قال تلا نسقي حتى يصدر الرعاء وأبونا شيخ كبير فسقى لهما ثم تولى إلى الظل فقال رب إني لما أنزلت إلي من خير فقير this ends with ayah number 24. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes when he leaves Egypt, he heads for a place called Median. And Median is a, is a place that is mentioned numerous times in the Quran. Some people uh, uh, attribute the men that he'll interact with, with Prophet Shu'aib. And Prophet Musa did not know where he was going, but he just left. And Allah willed that he was guided to Median. And this is the attitude of the person who takes the stance. They don't know where it's going to lead, but they trust Allah to protect them in this life and the next. And when he came to the watering hole of Median, he would have another stance for justice. He found around the watering holes these shepherds with their animals drinking. And he found on the side two women and their animals would be inclined to go to the water and the women would keep pushing the animals back. So unusual, unusual scene because why would these women be holding their animals back? So he said, what has happened? They said, we do not give our animals to drink until these shepherds are finished and our father is an elderly man. So you see, they said they don't want to go and push and, and be, you know, uh, uh, immodest with these men that are not cautious about their needs, but at the same time, their father is an elderly, frail man who can't do this. There's no one else at home to do this. Remember, Musa alayhi salam was a powerful, strong man. And the social norms of the time, unfortunately, as in too many places in the world today, did not afford women their due rights. So the attitude of that time was to leave these women. Let the men give their animals to drink. Let them wait this ugly, unjust attitude. 
that would mistreat them just because they are women and because they are not from a known family. But Musa alayhi salam, he didn't ask them, how much are you going to pay? He didn't ask them, what will I get in return? The believer does the right thing and Allah Azza wa provides. So he took these animals and he gave them to drink. He helped these two women that again had nothing to give back. And yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most just. You see in one case there's this Egyptian ungrateful man. And then there's other case these two women of higher ethics and morality. But what is constant between the two is Musa alayhi salam. He's not wondering what credit is he going to get or is anybody watching or is it the popular thing to do? He's asking what is most pleasing to Allah in this moment and that's where he is. From this moment, Prophet Musa would come back to the shade of the tree and call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I encourage you to uh, uh, review this ayah. He calls out to Allah saying, I am in desperate need of any good you would give me. From this dua, we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened the gates of goodness for him. From it, that he would become, though he was expelled from his land, he would find a new home and would one day return to Egypt as a prophet. From it, he was a single man away from the family. Allah would give him a family and a wife and children. From it, he would give him the company of righteous people and from it more than anyone, more than anything else, he would become a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and one of ulul azmi min al-rusul. And so in the shade of this great story, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his goodness upon us and to give us the strength and the ability to stand for justice without asking a price and to give us this courage to be steadfast in the face of life's trials and to open the gates of goodness for every person here and beyond this room struggling to be a better believer and a better person and to allow us insha'Allah to join the company of these great prophets on the day of judgment. Allahumma ameen wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.